There's a TAI and Vice Chairperson Sage, Sri Vidal Sushi Ji, doing the honors. There's Bharata, lighting the lamp. Padma Sri Awadi, Sri Ajit Bajaji, doing the honors now. Vice President Sheikh, Mr. Agarwal. Thank you everybody for kindly doing the honors for lighting the lamp. Uh, distinguished guests on the dais, Lieutenant General Kem Seth, my former senior colleague, Sri Vinod Zushi, Sri Bez Barua, my colleagues from the uh, industry, Jyoti Mayal, Ajit Bajad, and Jyoti has the uh, distinction of being the only lady on the stage. And uh, of course, Sri VP Agarwal, who was my predecessor in the Airports Authority of India, and uh, that is my connect with FAST, and I have been speaking at FAST events since I was in the Airports Authority of India. And uh, since the, uh, you know, the topic is aviation and sustainable tourism, I think I'm an easy speaker that they can, you know, lay their hands on for their events. So anyway, first what I would, you saw the, what uh, we have done in uh, the run of cut, similar events was, the second working group has also happened at uh, Siliguri and Darjeeling, which was in the month of April. And we had a very good response there also. And... Uh, just before I start on my prepared speech, which is on how the G20 is an opportunity, I think I should also talk about setting the context. Uh, recently, I was in Jaipur for the G20 Expo, and we saw inbound, uh, you know, tour operators come to India now after three years. So we all know what we have been through in the last three years, the, especially the tourism and aviation and hospitality sectors. Well, one of the worst states, there were wide, uh, large number of job losses. There were large revenue losses, uh, incomes were lost, jobs were lost. There was gloom and uh, pessimism all around. People had stopped sending their children to institutes of hotel management because there were stories of uh, retrenchment in many hospitality sectors. So people did not think this was a very lucrative sector. So there was a, a period of uncertainty and uh, despair all around. But, uh, you know, the way our vaccination program progressed, the way the virus is spread happened. Luckily, all that is now behind us and we are in a period of where people are again getting in the sector are getting confident because they're seeing the numbers and especially the domestic sector has revived very strong. Some of the stories that uh, most of you would be aware, but I can share with you the numbers. For instance, if you talk, you know, the infrastructure improvement at certain places like Varanasi, that has resulted, according to the statistics given by the UP government, in a 10x increase in footfalls compared to pre-COVID and, uh, you know, figures. So that is a dampener for international inbound. But I'm sure that with the numbers going up, with the way industry is coming, and of course the tailwinds that will be provided by the G20 and other steps that uh, will happen, I'm sure that we will get back to international inbound also uh, to, very, uh, to the pre-COVID numbers in this calendar year. So I'm very happy to be here today because uh, the tourism sector is, uh, you know, being given a great unparalleled opportunity to share its success stories on the global stage thanks to the G20 presidency. Developing tourism in mission mode under India's G20 presidency, which is started on the 1st of December 22, and in the backdrop of Azadi Kamrit Mahatsam, we are working in mission mode with a focus on convergence and public-private partnership. Under India's G20 presidency, more than 200 meetings are being organized at 59 locations. Now, this is something different. Most of the last few presidencies, of course, there was the shadow of the pandemic, but they happened in very few centers. It is only in India that such a large number of centers are being used, which shows that we have the strength to host international conferences and conventions at these places. 100 meetings of the 200 have already taken place. So half of the G20 meetings are already over. The balance, 100 meetings, and of course the summit in September in New Delhi are left. So India will consolidate the gains from transformation in connectivity and infrastructure, the growing economic power, and tremendous improvement in the framework conditions for growth of tourism in the country to promote and develop tourism in mission mode during the next 25 years, that is the Amrit Kal of India's independence. 
During this presidency, we in the ministry have planned to organize a number of events, engaging not only the government stakeholders, but also the travel, trade and hospitality sector. We have already organized two G20 tourism working group meetings, Siliguri and Run of Kutch. And during these meetings, discussions were held on several key priority areas. And the top five priority areas are green tourism, digitalization, skills, tourism, MSMEs, and better destination management centers. I'm sure that the sessions that you have planned today in the future on investment and how the India can be better showcased will lead to meaningful discussions and will have an impact on the thought and uh, the practice of tourism in India. And I extend my personal thanks to all the organizers for making me a part of this event and I wish it a great success and thank you for patiently hearing me out. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Phil. A very exciting new dress we had for you. And I would now request uh, General Seik to kindly do the honors of presenting a token of gratitude to all our eminent guests. As a memento, we also present today a book, Bharat Me Paratan, which is being authored by Sri Mangatram Daswanaji, sir. And I would now request and seek to present a memento to our guest of honor, Sri Arvind Sengji. General Seik to kindly do the honors, please. That's a book, Bharat Me Paratan, authored by Mangatram Daswani. So the venue has been decided that we at the Sharing Kashmir Convention Center, the working group meeting will be there. The delegates will be staying at Shrikhan and we'll do a side event on film tourism at Shrikhan. So we want to show India's and Shrikhan's potential as a film tourism destiny. And we hope to get uh, leading uh, people from the film industry, practitioners, state governments to show, uh, you know, highlight their best practices in film policies who want to attract, uh, you know, people to come and shoot for the best. And of course, the working group meeting will be there and we'll also take them on a technical excursion to Gunmat the next day to, you know, show them the facilities there. So it's a compact, uh, short visit, but uh, very important because this is a major international event that will be happening in Srinagar and Kashmir for the first time. Sir, one minute. I think the discussion was very warmed up. Myself, GS Bhai. I know. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, now, my question is that we have always believed, particularly in fast, aviation and tourism has got a symbiotic relationship. Of course. Of course. And now you are the one person who have a taste of both. Yes. And how would you like to prove that symbiotic relationship is there? You know, I mean, uh, we have worked together. I was involved in the execution of the Uran scheme, right, and sir. I'm seeing the results of that here. Yeah. And uh, so we work in close co collaboration with the Ministry of Civil Aviation yeah. in terms of new airports, new routes, yes. new tourism routes. Right. So that synergy helps. That synergy helps, and it helps in a positive manner. Of course. Thank you very much, sir, and thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.